What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my Samsung Galaxy A41 pros and cons. So let's get started. So in this video, we're going to be going over my top 5 pros and top 5 cons with the device. Now, just letting you know, the cons are definitely nitpicking because in general, I think this is a very fantastic device considering the tier that it does compete in. Of course, this phone is not a flagship, nor is it advertised to be one, so there are going to be compromises compared to a $1,000 smartphone, for example. But let's get started with the top five pros first. So coming in at number one definitely has to be the display. So with the Samsung Galaxy A41, we are getting a 6.1 inch display, which is Super AMOLED. It is 1080p with a PPI of 431. We're getting a 20 by 9 aspect ratio and an 85.9% screen to body ratio. Now, interestingly, the A41's display is actually a bit smaller than many of the other A-series phones to come out in 2020. And generally, I am a big fan of having a large display, since I mainly use my devices for content consumption. So in my mind, the bigger the display, the better. However, I do like how the A41 seems to kind of break the mold of the various other A-series phones with offering a smaller, more compact design. I know that there are a lot of people out there that do like having a device that is especially easy to use with one hand, and pocketable, and the A41 certainly does stand out from the other A-series phones in that regard. So the display I feel like looks really fantastic, really great colors here, and really rivals the type of display that you'd expect to see from a much more expensive phone. In addition to that, the bezels all around are very tiny as well. So as far as the display goes, I am very happy with the A41. Now my second favorite thing about the Galaxy A41 definitely has to be the cameras. Now with the device, we're getting a 25 megapixel front facing camera. And then on the back of the phone, we're getting a triple camera setup. So we're getting a 48 megapixel main camera, an eight megapixel ultra wide angle camera, and a five megapixel depth sensing camera. Now I certainly wanna use these cameras a bit more before I give you my full conclusions about them in the review, but so far, so good. You're able to take nice looking photos that have good brightness, decent color as well. You can also switch over to the ultra wide angle camera to really fit a lot more content into the frame here. And another interesting thing too about the A41 is that the ultra wide camera seems to be a bit wider than the ultra wides on the other A series devices that have been released this year. So if you are looking to fit the maximum amount of content into the frame here, then the A41 can certainly get the job done. Now, beyond that, we also get live focus portrait mode with both the back and front camera. So you're able to nicely blur out the background, which is great. I know many people like to use portrait mode. And for me personally, I feel like I use portrait mode with the front facing camera, oftentimes more than I do with the rear camera, because typically if I want to take a photo, I don't really have like somebody else that can take the photo of me. So having portrait mode with the front facing camera certainly does offer a lot of different advantages. Now going over to the regular photo mode, you get two different modes here. So the standard mode, but also you can crop out a little bit as well to fit more content into the frame. This especially comes in handy if you want to take a group selfie, for example. But in general, I'm very happy with the cameras here on the phone. Now, are they as good as the Pixel 4a, for example? No, they're not. <laughs> but you do get the ultra wide, which is something that the Pixel doesn't have. With the Pixel, and I've addressed this in other videos, I understand why they gave that phone just one camera on the rear because they wanted to make that one camera especially good. But then with other devices like the A41, maybe the main camera isn't quite as good, but you are getting other options such as an ultra wide. Now, as far as the depth sensing camera goes, I'm not totally convinced that they even needed to put an extra camera on here to achieve that, especially since devices like the Pixel 4a, for example, only have one camera, but still manage to pull off portrait mode better than most phones out there. 
So I don't really understand the science and engineering behind all of that, but from a consumer perspective, all I wanna do is get good results with the cameras. So in general, the A41's cameras certainly deserve a thumbs up. Now my third favorite thing about the Galaxy A41 definitely has to be the RAM and processor. Now with this device, we're getting four gigabytes of RAM, which is very good, definitely enough. And we're getting the MediaTek Helio P65. So the P65 is actually the same processor that's in the Galaxy A31 as well. And in general, I've had a very good experience using it. I'm able to get around the OS with no issues at all. Browsing the web is nice and smooth. Going on social media apps works perfectly fine as well. And in general, I think it is a very decent processor. Now, typically, or at least in the past, MediaTek hadn't had the best reputation with their processors, but they've come a long way in a very short period of time, and especially their Helio line of processors certainly are very impressive. So in general, performance for this phone, considering the tier that it is in, is perfectly fine and acceptable. Now my fourth favorite thing about this device is the amount of storage that we get. Now with the Galaxy A41, we are getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage with microSD card expansion. Now that storage is not quite as much as we're getting with the A31, which is 128 gigs, but still, 64 gigs, pretty decent still for a phone in this category. And it's pretty funny how Apple's iPhone 11, which is one of their flagships, and not their most expensive phone, but one of their flagships, still only gives us 64 gigs as the base option. So this device is significantly less expensive than the iPhone 11, but we're still getting 64 gigs of internal storage. So that's really good, definitely happy with that. And then of course, you can always add a micro SD card for additional expansion. So that's really good as well. And then finally, for my last pro with the A41, and there really are more beyond that, but just to kind of give you my top five, you know, coming in at number five certainly has to be that we're getting an in-display fingerprint sensor. So I know that in-display fingerprint sensors could be kind of a gimmick from time to time, but it does work really well here with the phone. I have no issues with it. It's certainly plenty fast. It's not an inconvenience either. And I just think it's a nice feature to see here with this device. So I'm glad that they have it. I'm glad that it works well and I think it's a good feature to have here that you don't find really too often with other phones in this kind of lower mid-range category. Even the Pixel 4a, for example, has a fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone. So, you know, I like the Pixel, don't get me wrong, I like it, but I do like how we're getting certain features with the A41, such as an in-display fingerprint sensor. I think that's really good. Now let's go over my top five worst things here with the A41. And again, it's a bit of nitpicking, but I just wanna point out these things, and many of these things are shortcomings that I'd like to see Samsung address with the successor to this phone, which won't be out for some time now, so they do have some time to address those things. But coming in at number one is the notch at the top of the phone. Now, I thought that we left the notch back in 2019. But apparently Samsung feels like with the A41 and even the A31, they need to continue the notch. Now, is it a deal breaker? No, I don't think it is. I especially do appreciate too, how we have a tiny bottom bezel and really tiny bezels overall with the phone, which gives us that really good screen to body ratio of 85.9%. But I would have preferred a hole punch at the top instead of the notch. So there is room for improvement here, but again, kind of nitpicking. I don't think it's a deal breaker, at least for me, maybe it is for you. So let me know what you think about the notch in the comments section below. Now coming in at number two, this is another shortcoming that is debatable for whether or not it is one, but there is no macro camera with the A41. Now many other devices from Samsung in the A series in 2020 do give us a macro camera. And that of course is very nice if you wanna take close up pictures. However, oftentimes, you can just use the main camera on the phone and get close up to the subject or object and things will focus or at least from a little bit of a distance and then you can zoom in. So you understand what I'm talking about here. It, it's nice having the macro camera, but in most situations you can accomplish the same results with the standard camera. But on the other hand, 
having the macro camera certainly doesn't inconvenience anybody either. So if they would have included it, I think that would have been nice to have. Now coming in at number three, that is that we have just one speaker. Now, other devices also have just one speaker in the bottom. But the thing is with the A41 is that unlike other phones like the Moto G Power, for example, you don't get audio that comes out of the top. So if you're watching video landscape, for example, all your audio is gonna be coming out of this end of the device. And because of that, you're getting a less immersive experience. Now, this is another thing that's not necessarily a deal breaker because the speaker that is on here is not bad, but it could have easily been improved by also having audio come out of the top of the phone. So that's another little thing that can make a big difference potentially that Samsung could address in the successor to this device. Now coming in at number four, that is no water resistance with the A41. Now that's pretty standard with all the A-series phones, even up to the A71, there is no water resistance. And I know that does add an additional cost when manufacturing the device, but people are people and some tend to get their devices wet. So it's definitely a nice thing to have water resistance. If this phone had it, that would be yet another bonus. So I don't know if that's something that Samsung ever intends on adding to the A-series devices, but it seems like they've gone out of their way to not add it, maybe to give us a additional reason to buy an S-series device, for example, or a Note. But there is no water resistance, so if you're looking for a phone with that, you're not gonna find it with the A41. And then finally, the last thing about this phone, and this really is pretty minor, but it is the plastic build. So this is not a deal breaker for me because typically I do like to put my devices in cases. And if you're putting a phone in a case, then the material that the phone's made out of really doesn't matter as long as it's at least high quality and solid, which certainly this phone is solid. It doesn't feel cheap. But you can see it is all plastic. I mean, at least if we had like a metal rail going around the sides of the phone, I think that would have been a nice touch just to make it feel a little bit more premium. And I would have liked to see that at least with several A-series phones, but unfortunately, every single A-series device is made out of plastic. Again, not a deal breaker, but I would at least like to see a little bit of variety when it comes to the A-series. Like maybe some A-series phones could have metal and then Others could be plastic. I'm not really sure how they do it, but let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. Would you like to see an A-series phone with metal around the sides? I believe the A-series devices that launched in 2018, which is the first year of the A-series, did have metal incorporated into the build, but then they ditched that after that year. But I'm curious to know what you think about that. But these are my pros and cons, best and worst things about the Samsung Galaxy A41. In general, I'm a big fan of the phone. I think it is a very fantastic device. I think that Samsung's A series in general with the various devices in it are very competitive this year, giving us lots of very good affordable options. But I'm definitely curious to know what you think about my top five pros and top five cons. But this is Kevin here, this is the Samsung Galaxy A41, and I will see you in the next video.